Hello, thank you so much for joining me. Today I am going to show you the entire process from start to finish of making a digital pattern. And it's kind of a beast of a video. I still don't know how I feel about it because I didn't really write a script for the voiceover. I just kind of went with it. Um, mostly because it's been sitting here undone while I tell myself I need to write a script. And then finally I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna talk about what I did and I hope it's useful for you. <laughs> so without further ado, here you go. Jumping straight in, I decide I need to draw an idea of what exactly it is I want. And in this case, I want something flowy and comfortable looking pajama E, you know, something you could wear to sleep on a cold winter or fall night. I added the drop shoulders and some cuffs, just as a yeah, cute design feature, and drawing a face because it bothers me when they don't have faces. And then the pajama bottom pattern I already have. So then I move on to sketching out kind of a general idea of what I think my final pieces are going to look like by the time I'm done. This I usually only do in my head, but for the video I thought it might be nice for you guys to kind of see. We are opting for very, very simple in this case. Lots of boxy lines for that loose look. So I grab my sloper, which is usually the base of most of my patterns, and my doll, whom I'm going to take a few key measurements on. Uh, I found kind of the widest part of her waist and where I want the end of the sweater to sort of land, and then I line up my sloper on my piece of paper with that. I think that with a simple, simple design like this, I probably didn't actually need to use my sloper, and it might have just made things a little bit more complicated than they already were, but I draw in sort of the collar that I want, and then I push out the seam for the shoulder, and we're kind of creating that box that I had before. And then I almost forget, but then add in my seam allowance. So that is the front piece. And then because it's so boxy and I want things to line up nicely, I actually use the front piece to create the back piece without even bothering with the back sloper. And I just draw that collar line up a little bit higher. But all the rest I keep the same because that's just this style of shirt. And then I measured the collar just to see, because this is the kind of shirt that I want to be able to put over their head without having to pop the head off. And oh boy, that's something you can only say for dolls, isn't it? Uh, they do have pretty big noggins proportionately though, so <laughs> not everything is quite so nice. But you can see I got it to be a little bit bigger and now I'm gonna sort of trust that the stretch of the fabric will get me the rest of the way around her head. This is something that I test while I'm going, you know. I measured the drop of the drop sleeve and then I measured how long I want her arm to be and I'm just kind of basing my sleeve on those measurements and as you're watching you might think wow she's going real fast and loose with those measurements and yes yes I am I'm the kind of person that needs to do 8,000 mock-ups of something before I'm truly happy with it so in this first round of like figuring stuff out I am very just like 
gather estimates and go. <laughs> I just need something to start with so that I can have something to fit later. And this part, I <laughs> realize my piece of paper that I'm trying to be frugal with just isn't quite long enough. So I measured around the hand to make sure that I could get it over her hands. She had one of the wider hands on and I figured that would probably be okay. So I'm just using those measurements now to make a rectangle instead of trying to turn that really rough cut piece of paper into a rectangle. Sorry about my head getting in the way. Okay, so that looks like a sleeve, if you squint. Then I did the cuff. And you will find that later I have some issues with this. Again, we just need something to start with, but my cuff I originally measured being like, oh, I want this to be, you know, nice and tight around her arm, despite the fact that the sleeve is incredibly wide. And then I move straight on to the collar because, oh wait, no, this is the waistband. I forgot. I don't think I even drew this piece before. <laughs> but the waistband is going to be roughly the same width as the cuff and the collar at this point. And then I decide it needs to be narrower, I guess. I can't make up my mind a lot in the early stages of drafting. <laughs> You'll probably notice as we go along. Then I draft up a collar to match. And this one I go based on, first I measure the seam of the actual collar. And then of course that's only half of it, so I multiply that by two, and then I take off a bunch. Like, I, I don't remember the exact number of how much I took off, but the reason you want your collar to be narrower than the actual seam that it's getting sewn into is so that it pulls in at the neck a little bit. And that's just something I've learned through experience, so going in, I draft it that way. So here I make a dumb mistake. <laughs> I've got my sleeves and my cuffs, and the cuff cannot stretch all the way, like at all, not even close. There's, there's a full inch and a quarter going on there, like absolutely ridiculous. To me, in my infinite wisdom, think, oh, I'll cut the sleeve down to match the cuff. This is a terrible idea, and you'll see why soon. And even though I had made the collar narrower, I still had extra collar left over, so I cut that piece off and then use it to figure out how much I need to cut off the actual pattern. I'm using the collar piece as one piece at this point, and I'm not a big fan of how that ends up looking, so that gets changed later. But here's our first draft! It's awful! Oh my goodness! Look at those weird little noodle arms! <laughs> and they're so long! <laughs> I mean, it's baggy, but it's way too baggy, and it's way too long, and there's so many things going on here. But like I said, I played it fast and loose, and I'm just kind of figuring out how much I need to take off. And yeah, that drop sleeve is just way too dropped, so I cut my back and my front pieces a little bit more narrow and then I write version 2 on it so I know I've done it. <laughs> I do recommend taking notes on things when you've changed them so that you know you did it. And then the sleeve. <laughs> yeah we're just gonna we're just gonna tape that back on it's fine it's fine that's okay. And the cuff I decide to just figure out 
Okay, we're gonna base the cuff off the sleeve instead of the other way around. And my front, I put an X on the cuff piece that I'm definitely not gonna keep. The collar I decided was still too wide. And the waistband was not wide enough. However, I had cut it, my front and back pieces shorter and didn't think that that would affect things. So I probably didn't need to add that piece onto the waistband at this point, but I do also make my pieces shorter too. So this version is way better than our first version. <laughs> They're still nitpicking because I'm me, but you can see this fits a lot better. It looks more like an actual sweater. And I ended up going back and forth on the sleeve length like a ton. And that's just the nature of the game. Sometimes I do it because I can't decide which I like better. <laughs> and then I literally cut the piece I added. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, there's just, there's, there's a lot of back and forth with my pattern making techniques. We make our collar a tiny bit shorter. And the cuff a tiny bit shorter. And even though it seems like I'm making a lot of changes, I was actually happy enough with this version that I did go ahead and start the process of scanning it in. This involves uh, taping everything to a little template that I had printed out with just like an inch by inch square. It's not fully necessary, but I just kind of like having it. Um, then we use my old dinosaur computer, which takes its time to scan everything in. And I save those files and send them to my actually nice laptop. I load up the template that I've created and I just start outlining everything using a line tool. And this can get pretty fiddly but I do use this to sort of true up my lines and you see I cut and paste that line to make sure that it's actually parallel. And I do that for anything that's rectangular to sort of keep things as rectangular as possible. And once all of that has been sort of put in, I add my text and all of the sewing instructions and my little kitty head and then I go ahead and save that so that I can print that out and use that as one of my final tests. And one of the first things I notice is that my waistband is labeled sleeve and says to cut two instead of cut one so I fix that and cut everything out because I'm going to use these pieces to make my pattern pieces specifically to test to make sure that there's no mistakes or nothing weird happened when I was truing up my angles. And I remembered that I also need to take photographs for the instructions because of course part of buying a pattern is getting really nice detailed instructions. Um, this was the point where I was still trying to decide if I wanted the collar to be all one piece and I was sort of playing around with how best to stretch it evenly and eventually I decided I needed to find the center because of course the back is not as long as the front and in the end I did end up separating out the collar piece because this was an annoying process that was made a lot easier by just doing two separate collar pieces and then your end product does end up being more symmetrical because the two shoulder seams are going to be the same and 
I really preferred that in the end. But in the meantime, I struggle. After it's been sewn on, this is kind of the part where I... I'm rethinking my life choices. <laughs> I don't like that the collar is one piece, so I measure the front and the back and I decide to do a bunch of math. <laughs> I was getting kind of sick of just using trial and error to figure out my measurements and I decided that proportionately I can figure out where to cut the collar if I can just figure out where the second shoulder seam should be. So I do a whole bunch of math and I decide that it's all garbage and it doesn't make any sense and then I did it anyway and it ended up working. And it's been long enough now that I couldn't even tell you what I'm doing without spending entirely too much brain power on it, but just trust me in that it's probably faster and it's probably easier to just trial and error it like I had been before. I just, every now and then I fall down a math hole and I don't know why. So, Anyway, the collar is split into a front collar and a back collar, and we're gonna move on. So, because I'm taking pictures for the instructions, I need to redo these parts. So I did end up cutting them out again, and then trying my new collar pieces. And this felt a lot easier to evenly stretch, and I liked it much more. So I kept going ahead with this. Once the collars have been put on, we do the shoulder seams. And here's where I actually make my final decision. I've got both designs, both styles, and I look at them very thoroughly and decide, yep, two is better than one. Now we have our sleeve and I realized I didn't cut it very nicely so I cut it a little better and we stretch the cuff just like we stretch the collar And once the sleeves have their cuffs, I figure out how best to attach them to the body of the sweater. I did decide that because I used that center point, I would mark that on the pattern just to make it a little bit easier for people. If they wanted to mark that center while they were cutting, they could. If not, they don't need to.
And once the sleeves have been attached, we get to sew up the side seams. I like to line up key parts first and then sort of do everything else after. I find that is just the quickest and the easiest. And then I do put in a few snips in the underarms just to sort of loosen up the tension there. You can also cut out any extra bulk if you need to. And with the bottom waistband piece, I decided I wanted it to look very, very finished and nice on the bottom, so I actually sew the short ends together first before attaching it to the bottom of the sweater. This is actually how you would do the cuffs and even the collar on like a full-sized item for like a person because you have the room for it, but because we're making clothing for dolls, I do try to find alternative solutions that still look nice and also don't make you want to rip your hair out. <laughs> but because this is wide enough along the base, you can actually pretty easily fit it in your machine, and I just thought it made a really nice bottom finish, so it was kind of worth the extra effort. After I have gotten all the seams sewn and all that good stuff, I use a nice big needle to sort of bury my serger ends. If you don't do this, they can unravel pretty easily, so I like to either bury them wholesale like this, or if I'm working on stuff for the shop, I'll usually tie them off first and then bury the tails. But since this was just a piece for me, I didn't mind just burying the the whole thing. <laughs> it's actually, I think, a little bit easier to pull apart the threads and then tie them together and then bury them that way. I was sort of experimenting at this point and I'm not sure I'm going to keep doing it this way. If it goes well, it's quicker, but as you can see, it doesn't always go well. <laughs> And of course we try it on once again. I do decide that I'm still not 100% happy with all the final lengths. I love the fit in the shoulders and I think the widths of everything are perfect. So they're pretty small changes. I go ahead and gather up all my pattern pieces and make my notes, adding a half an inch to the bottom of the sweater, adding a quarter of an inch to the bottom of the sleeves, and then of course I've got my two separate collar pieces that I need to fix in the digital version. So that's what I'm doing here. The first thing I do is drop in a couple of rulers that are set up to tell me the inches. And I have tested it to see they are definitely accurate. Um, 
it helps that I have my little guide over there. But those are nice. Uh, and then I cut the bottom off and then just drag it down. I didn't end up liking this though because I couldn't tell if I was pulling it straight down or not just by eye, especially the full half an inch. Sometimes I can get away with it with just like a quarter of an inch, but this was just too much. So I duplicated the layer and then drop the opacity down on the bottom layer and that made it so that I could still see it and I could line up my edges really really precisely and then it's just a matter of dragging down your uh, top layer so that it meets and then you've got a nice finish. I do that for both the front and the back and then I also do it to fix the sleeves and I do something similar to cut the collar piece. I basically just used measurements that I had found in the real world and used my rulers to figure out the collar pieces going forward. And now that I have my digital pattern correct, I move on to the instructions which involves editing every single one of those pictures I took for color correction because my space doesn't have very good color when I take photos. Look at how yellow that is. Oh my goodness. Uh, granted, the paper I was using this time isn't fully white either, which is not helping matters, but I use brightness and color adjusters to kind of fix each and every one of these. And then I also draw in the stitching lines that I am meaning to indicate just to make it as clear as possible. And once that's been done, I load up yet another pre-made template and I insert all of my recently adjusted pictures in order. And yeah, you can really tell which pictures I kept and which pictures I didn't, <laughs> just based on the colors alone. <laughs> but I insert the picture, I resize it so that it only takes up about half of the page, and then I start writing out the instructions. And this process is long and fiddly because it's actually kind of hard to think up the most clear and concise way to say something, especially in print. So yeah, that's kind of the whole process. I'm going to spare you the agony of watching me write because boy howdy that's not fun for anybody and we're gonna call it done. Now you've seen the whole process of making a digital pattern from start to finish. It's long. <laughs> I hope it was informative though. But wait, there's more! I forgot! <laughs> I did have to double check those last minute changes. Um, and also I needed to make another sweater for the product shots. I didn't take my pictures over again because the construction process was exactly the same, but I wanted my product shots to present an accurate description of what the sweater was going to look like when worn. So I remade that and then I took my product shots and then you have to edit those and slap on another template for a front page photo and then you're done. <laughs> I always forget the front page photo and inevitably I'm like, all right, I'm gonna post it. Oh no, there's more to do. Uh, so it's a long process. There's a lot of steps and I thought you might be interested in seeing it. So please go ahead, like, and subscribe if this is the kind of content that you want to see more of. If it's not and you want to see something else, let me know down below. And I do hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.